Curiosity is an extremely important driver that all of us share when we are children growing up and we have to learn so much about the world. Abandoning that driver, the curiosity that accelerates our learning, is a grave mistake. All of us should nurture curiosity in adulthood so that we can keep understanding the world, especially in the moments when it is rapidly changing, with similar efficiency as we do when we are growing up. The assumed wisdom that curiosity killed the cat is, like many other occasions where we are quoting proverbs supposedly giving us the ancient wisdom of past generations, in reality represents a memetic programming of social control. If you are not curious, if you don't want to explore alternatives, if you don't ask uncomfortable questions, then you are much easier to keep uh, in your place and the people who can ask those questions will find the answers that apply to them first and the best and then provide the answers to you for those questions even that you didn't know you should be asking. So being curious is a necessary component of survival, especially in the world today, because we cannot count on anything that we learned being constant. Well, I should say not everything. Some things are going to stay constant. For example, the speed of light or the force of gravity or many other laws of nature that we have understood and that hopefully are going to represent a certainty during our lifetimes. However, many other sciences even contain acquired knowledge that is less solid. And even further, there are social sciences, there are uh, less uh, physical and the more uh, touchy-feely types of sciences where anything that we learned and the, the things that we believe are sure and true derive from foundations that are much less stable. Economics is one of these. The way that we design economic models is not at all scientific from the point of view of chemistry or physics. Uh, it is uh, much more easy to question and often it needs to be fundamentally questioned. The role of individuals as they uh, freely engage in uh, commercial exchange to benefit of both, uh, as uh, societies structure themselves in organizations of increasing sophistication and complexity, manifest behaviors that cannot be effectively understood with today's economic models. We have to be more ambitious. We have to strive to both apply uh, artificial intelligence, computing models, uh, statistics, uh, even humble tools that are still valid and effective at a fine-grained level. It is going to be one of the important uses of uh, Internet of Things uh, sensor networks to collate and to act on information at a fine-grained level uh, where we are able to monitor and understand the flows of transactions, uh, mainly among machines where we will be less exposed uh, to issues of uh, uh, privacy and intrusive monitoring of human behavior. So as we are 
uh, experimenting with uh, changing understanding of what it means to build an economic model and what it means uh, for people to interact and societies and nations to, to trade, we uh, really have to force ourselves and keep asking important questions of what is the role of the individual in society? What is the benefit to the individual of society? What is the dignity that we must preserve and enhance as society evolves and improves. This must be measurable too. And only if we design dreams that can be brought back to reality through the successful implementation of experiments that having proven themselves can be adopted in broader or even worldwide scales, we can be relatively sure that the direction where we are going is desirable and if it is not that applying the same method we will be able to course correct. Definitely sustainability is one of the big questions of today. Nation states have failed in addressing it for decades. Technology has not. Solar energy is becoming the cheapest source of energy and uh, in increasing geographies it is successfully competing with every other source. Being curious about current solutions in areas like solar energy, for example, allows us to upgrade and update our knowledge of these solutions. The lack of curiosity or a curiosity that was present 10 years ago and now appears to have been extinguished is what fails uh, the movie Planet of Humans uh, produced by Michael Moore, which is fatally flawed. The movie accuses the environmental movement and more specifically renewable energies and even more specifically solar photovoltaics of not being able to deliver on their promises. But it actually displays solutions of 10 and 20 years ago which were inferior and not competitive with what was available uh, on the markets in areas uh, such as energy generation or transportation. Internal combustion engines were better than uh, electric cars at the time. But if you are curious, you will not be content in assuming that what was true 20 years ago is still true. You will verify if that knowledge is valid and you will confirm that it is not. That today solar photovoltaics is competitive, that today electric cars are the only rational choice for um, purchasing uh, a vehicle for personal or even in uh, ever broadening categories, commercial transportation. So this is a very concrete example of how a lack of curiosity can um, drive you astray and uh, derive conclusions that are not only not applicable, but outright uh, damaging. Eight million people, uh, as of this recording, has seen the movie Planet of Humans on YouTube. How many of those eight million people left with the false information that the movie implanted in them. How many will have the discipline and the curiosity uh, to falsify the statements of the movie? Hopefully many. I hope most of them. But even though uh, that movie is wrong and failed and displays a fatal lack of curiosity, None of us should feel that we are not allowed to go beyond any of the statements. Are you curious? 
if what I'm saying is right, well, the world is your oyster in uh, really uh, eating up uh, information and being able to uh, categorize, understand, synthesize, digest, and act upon information at an ever more increasing rate of effectiveness. In the previous episode, uh, we spoke about these very tools of uh, information uh, gathering and topic extraction. Um, the curiosity that I'm inviting you uh, to have is empowered by those tools because it enables you to rapidly uh, come to conclusions, rapidly aggregate and assess information that you have available. So this invitation to be curious is practical and actionable exactly because we have those tools available and we are lucky to be living in times where not only children can afford to be curious, but adults can afford to be curious too. And I hope that you will be as curious as I am in finding answers, sometimes confirming our expectations, and many times very surprising and uh, very unexpected. And most of the times, really, those are the most uh, exhilarating answers. I also want to spend a few minutes uh, inviting you to check out some other content that I have been producing in the past uh, several weeks. The Context is a weekly uh, video segment uh, and uh, many of you enjoy it. I receive uh, a lot of uh, uh, feedback and I want to thank all of you for providing it. Alongside the context, I'm also producing three other uh, video segments. Searching for the question live, where I meet uh, people talking about technology, its impact on society, entrepreneurs, science fiction writers, conference organizers and creators uh, like uh, Richard Saul Wurman, um, the creator of TED sci-fi authors uh, that I mentioned, like uh, uh, David uh, Brin, uh, entrepreneurs uh, like uh, Olga uh, Uskova, the founder of Cognitive Pilot that produces um, a device uh, that uh, uh, allows uh, uh, agricultural machines uh, to be autonomous, and uh, many other people from uh, all walks of, uh, of life and from all over the world. Searching for the question live uh, streams live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And those uh, who follow it uh, while we are live can ask uh, questions, make comments. That is the beauty and the interactivity in a very short feedback loop uh, of, uh, of live streaming. There is also an Italian version called Qual è la domanda, live, and uh, that is for uh, Italian guests and an Italian audience, or those who understand Italian. And most recently, I started Pitching Live. Pitching Live is for startups that want to meet me as an investor. I receive dozens of uh, uh, proposals uh, every day. And um, um, together with my team, uh, we look at the pitch decks, uh, we categorize and we analyze them. And then those that uh, pass our filters uh, are usually invited for a meeting to uh, present uh, their project uh, directly uh, to us. And rather than doing it just uh, amongst ourselves, some time ago, I decided that it would be actually uh, very positive for the entire ecosystem of investors, startups, advisors, um, accelerators, incubators, to do it rather in the open. And of course, there will be startups that decline the opportunity because uh, they uh, don't feel that uh, sharing 
at that level of detail information about their project is appropriate. Or there will be others that say, I feel fine uh, meeting you one-on-one, -on -one, but I don't feel comfortable. For some other reason, they are not ready uh, to uh, do it uh, online uh, in the live session. But those that are ready uh, can greatly enjoy the setting where they have 15 minutes of time to present uh, the project, typically through the pitch deck. And then we have 15 minutes to uh, ask questions where I am leading the questions, but also we receive the questions from uh, the live audience. The uh, opportunity to produce uh, these uh, um, videos alongside with the context is uh, really wonderful and I greatly enjoy it. So I hope that uh, you will also check them out. Uh, if you are subscribed to the YouTube channel, you will already be receiving the alerts, especially if you turn on the uh, little bell icon. And uh, uh, on uh, Facebook, uh, if you like uh, the page searching for the question, uh, similarly, you will be alerted uh, when we are going live. But as always, you can also watch uh, the videos after the live is over when they are immediately made available to everybody online. Thank you very much and uh, see you at the next episode.